Finance Minister Christia Freeland tabled her fall economic statement Thursday, a multi-billion dollar plan that calls for more spending even as the economy stands on the brink of a recession, with interest rates set to move still higher. While Freeland has promised fiscal prudence in this era of sky-high inflation, the mini-budget proposes new programs to help some of the people hit hardest by rising prices, including students and low-income workers, and to launch what she called a real, robust industrial policy to position Canada for future economic growth. Freeland announced that all federal student and apprenticeship loans will be interest-free permanently and unveiled a multi-billion dollar plan to automatically send Canada Workers Benefit, CWB, payments to people who qualified in the previous tax year. The government says it will spend $4 billion over the next six years to automatically issue what it's calling advance payments to those eligible for the Canada Workers Benefit. Recipients won't have to wait for tax time to collect all of what they're owed. Workers qualify for the benefit based on their income from the previous tax year. The benefit will provide up to $714 for single workers and $1,231 for a family. To help students, Freeland announced the government will make all Canada student loans and Canada apprentice loans permanently interest-free, including those currently being repaid. This $2.7 billion program is expected to save the average student loan borrower $410 a year. The government also has earmarked another $802.1 million in spending over the next three years for youth employment and skills strategy that will include some 70,000 annual summer job placements. On the housing file, the government promised Thursday to table legislation soon to implement the long-promised tax-free first home savings account, an initiative that was first pitched in the spring budget. The government fears the economy could slip into a recession next year as the Bank of Canada's aggressive interest rate hikes substantially slow a once red-hot economy. Private sector economists surveyed by Ottawa are projecting real GDP growth at just above zero for the next several quarters. That would push Canada's unemployment rate up from the current 5.2% to 6.3% by the end of next year. The federal government presented what it called a downside scenario for growth and employment, one in which a recession results in thousands of lost jobs, fewer taxes collected, a spike in employment insurance, EI, payments, an increase in debt servicing costs, and a dramatically higher deficit, $49.1 billion in 2022 and 2023. Conservative leader Pierre Poilievre blasted Prime Minister Justin Trudeau over the fiscal document, accusing him of engaging in a massive orgy of money printing. Speaking in the Commons, Poilievre said it was federal government spending that fueled inflation, driving up the cost of everyday goods. The government maintains the pandemic, supply chain disruptions, and the war in Ukraine are to blame for price increases. Poilever said Freeland's inflationary scheme, which proposes $6.1 billion more in spending for this fiscal year alone, will only make matters worse. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Stop the insanity, stop the inflation, said Poilever, who did not make himself available to answer reporters' questions afterward. He said that a government led by him would introduce a pay-as-you-go law, which would force the federal government to offset every dollar of new spending with cuts elsewhere. We're going to inherit this mess. We're going to have to fix the problem. We'll have a big job ahead of us, a very big job. He'll leave a big mess just like his dad left. He'll be off on a beach somewhere surfing, Poilever said of Trudeau. With the United States Federal Reserve and the Bank of Canada determined to bring down inflation through higher rates, the official said, Ottawa is now expecting a relatively shallow, relatively short recession over three quarters in 2023. Trudeau has had a history of reckless spending and bad management of resources, and as Poilever argued, this is the same scene with Justin Trudeau's government, even as Deputy Minister Freelance's mini-budget seems to have some promising plans in it. We would like to know what Canadians think of this mini-budget with its gross promises in the comments section. Also, like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications.